Developing your aim in Splatoon is hard, because rather than being one skill, it's actually a bunch of small, interrelated skills, all of which you can be better or worse at. And the training room Nintendo gave us only helps with some of them. I'm going to talk about some of the differences between the task of aiming at and shooting targets, and aiming at resisting players, so you can be mindful about the habits you're teaching yourself, and maybe compensate for them a little with the drills you do. Some of the targets in the training room don't move, unlike most players you'll ever be shooting at. The better they get, the more they'll move, and the more this will become a problem. Even just walking and shooting players will still cause you to miss if all you ever train is to hit the stationary targets. But strong players are going to do an awful lot more than just walk and shoot. They'll swim, they'll make abrupt direction changes, they'll jump. Jumping has absolutely no analog in the training room. People aren't going to be used to opponents moving on that axis at all, and have trouble aiming at it no matter how much time they spend doing aim drills. The moving targets are still nice to have for practicing your tracking aim. You can teach yourself to hit successive shots on a moving target there. The skill you won't learn, though, is how to quickly recognize which direction a target is moving in, and project which direction they'll be moving in the future. That's a skill that you just need gameplay to learn. The fact that the movement is generally very predictable, even when the targets are moving, plays into another problem. In the training room, targets are going to spawn in the same places every time, and the ones that move are going to move at the same speed in the same directions on the same cycle. It takes a lot of discipline not to just get the target's locations from your muscle memory and aim where you already know they are instead of forcing yourself to react to their positions. When I do aim drills, I will often close my eyes and spin the joysticks around as a way of sort of shuffling the target's positions, so that when I open my eyes, the first target I shoot at is actually in an unknown position. Otherwise, for instance, I'm going to position in places in the training room where I know I have range on the targets, and so I'm never training myself to judge whether I'm in range or not and I'll go through them in the same order and start to autopilot. Then I'll be put into a game where all of a sudden I'm missing shots, because the skill that I really need to hit players is not foreknowledge, which is what I'm practicing in the training room with my eyes open, but fast reactions, which is what I'm training when I first open my eyes and have to snap to the first available target. In other shooters, Opponents returning fire really only puts you on a timer, makes it so that you either have to get to safety or hit your shots before they hit enough shots on you. In Splatoon, though, they can totally whiff a shot and still make you less likely to win the fight by doing so. Shots paint your feet, and the dummies in the training room don't shoot back. Yes, there's the copy machine, but I shouldn't need to explain how many problems there are with using that to train. It's, it's sort of useful for labbing out certain interactions, but it's not a well-designed tool at all. It's so far away. Ugh. As you move around shooting the targets, the area around you will quickly get painted your color, because unlike in a real match, there's no one painting over it in the enemy color. So after relatively few reps, if you want to simulate the way you'll actually have to move in a match, you'll need to take the step of cleaning up the ink around you, which few people are willing to consistently do. Even then, uninked turf and enemy turf interact with your character differently. One of the first frustrations most Splatoon players encounter is the hazard of enemy ink, where they suddenly don't know what's going on because control has been robbed from them, and they don't yet have the instincts to paint their feet the instant it happens to get control back. The training room does practically nothing to prepare them for this condition. Yes, including the copy machine. In the training room, every target is out in the open on flat ground. In the actual game, though, there are all kinds of weird level geometry like raised platforms and ramps that create elevation differences between opponents in fights. Smart players will also largely play around cover and right side peak. All of those features can cause a player to become a smaller target that forces you to hit more accurate shots, and there's very little in the training room to prepare you for this. You also won't have the easiest time figuring out angles for fall-off shots, or however your weapon behaves when it's fired off a ledge.
The absolute worst thing you can do in a fight is fire shots and miss them without moving around. It gives the opponent time to react and get their aim on you while you aren't doing anything to throw their aim off. Painting strategically so the opponent's movement is cut off is one thing, as is painting for your own movement. But what I'm referring to here are what I call warning shots. The shots that do nothing for you except alert the opponent that there's someone they didn't see attacking them. In the training room, your target isn't going to scatter and run for cover just because you missed five shots in their direction. Players will often get in the habit of holding down the fire button until they get the target down, when what they should be doing is ensuring that their first shot is landing every single time, and immediately moving to throw off an enemy player's aim as soon as they miss. This is something you can work on in the training room, as long as you're disciplined. Don't give yourself a free pass on missing your first shots, because in a real game, the target's going to become much harder to hit as soon as that happens.